Did you know that the jet engine was invented before the flying toilet? Why was it almost impossible to put a thousand years old invention on an airplane? Hello, this is the captain. Somewhere in Vietnam War, Commando Stoddell of the aircraft carrier Midway decided to throw a toilet over North Vietnam. He and the ship's weapons officer attached a tail and a thunderbolt to the toilet. But after being thrown at the enemy, it began to spin, flew like a missile and almost hit number 2 who was flying next to him. Moral, toilets are not meant to fly. One of the biggest challenges in the field of aviation was to build the toilet on a plane. Once that wouldn't be a nightmare for the passengers. Our story begins in the 20s, the early days of civil aviation. The planes got bigger and held more passengers, the flight ranges increased and people couldn't resist. And without a solution to this matter, international flights would not be possible. And throwing faces from airplane is simply not... Proper. So, the first plane with a toilet was invented by Johnny Capani, a great aviation genius, in 1921. The craft, CA-60, was a huge pilot ship with 9 wings. Yes. 9. And 8 engines, it had a toilet with attached waste tank. But what? The smell didn't know it wasn't allowed to come out of the tank. And the toilet smelled awful. The laws of physics were not impressed with the CA-60, and on an early test flight it crashed. In 1928, the Hadley Page company launched the HP-42, an airplane with a toilet compartment in the middle of the body. This time the smell wasn't limited to the cabin environment, the whole plane was stunned. You probably guessed that this plane wasn't a great success, but another company failed much more. In 1934, the British Supermarine launched the Sterner plane. This time the waste was pumped with air pressure coming from pipes in the body of the plane. Someone there forgot that pressurized air tends to make a sound. Not only did the toilet stink, it made a blood curdling screech when it was turned on. Supermarine ate the heart out, its plane was called the Screaming Toilet, and the whole industry laughed, and rightfully, until she built one fighter plane, uh, the Spitfire, which saved Britain and the company's name. In the 30s, the industry struggled to come up with a toilet that wouldn't white out the plane, and wouldn't threaten or disgust the passengers. When the chemical toilet invented, everyone was happy, but the joy was premature. The chemical caused nasal dizziness and vomiting. Even after changing the composition of the toilet, only very large planes had a toilet compartment. World War II accelerated the use of tiny chemical toilets, which long-range bombers crews specially hated. When someone would go to convenience, he had to pray that the pumps didn't clog, and that the plane wouldn't shake or bounce, which would result in an unpleasant encounter between the user and the contents of the toilet. But here, the way was broken. The pumps were connected to the aircraft system, and didn't need their own equipment, which drastically reduced the weight. After the war, the development of toilets based on air pressure began, without chemicals or Water. Today, planes' toilets are sophisticated and most expensive outside of the International Space Station. There is a complex array of pumps, filter, sensor, and containers which ensure that you will not suffer when you come to vacate. And about the noises, we have all gotten used to the loud compression sound. 